What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Generica, the owner of the Stoners Vault. And today I kind of want to go through how I make my rolling trays. This isn't going to be an actual video of me making a rolling tray, but I do want to kind of show you guys the steps that I take and the products that I use to create my rolling trays. If you would like to see this video, stick around and we'll get started. Hey, I also forgot to add that I do have starter kits and I do have one on my website right now. I will be uploading this next one as well. Um, you will receive pretty much everything on this table, but in smaller sizes, you will receive your uh, blank rolling tray. You will receive your mask and your gloves, your popsicle sticks, your paint brushes, glitter. You will receive your epoxy and everything that you need for your tray the only thing that your tray will come is pre-sprayed so i don't even know why i'm actually holding this one up your tray will actually come pre-sprayed because obviously i can't find little miniature spray paints and i don't want to send a huge spray paint just for one tray so i will have the tray already pre-sprayed for you and everything else you will receive uh, your image will already be sealed because these don't come in miniature sizes as well. And you will receive your epoxy, your glitter, your glue, everything to get started on your rolling tray. You will also receive a little card that will show you the steps to take to make your rolling tray as well. So if you want to purchase one from me, make sure you visit the Stoners Vault. Uh, that's www.thestonersvault.com. Everything will be in the description box below so you can get your starter kit um, and try it out. See if you like it before you go out and purchase all of these things spend two two and three hundred dollars buying all of these supplies and realize that you really don't like it or if you just want to try a different craft make your own rolling tray just visit me at the stoners vault to uh, purchase your starter kit okay guys i know i'm not fully in the screen but i wanted to make sure that i got as much of the table as possible so uh let's get started with what i have so I already have some trays that I already made in different uh, orders so you guys can see the steps that I take. But first I'm gonna show you guys the products that I actually use. So first I'm gonna start off with my gloves. I get these uh, nitrile gloves off Amazon. I'll link them below. Um, I buy the 100, 100 pack cases and I buy like four or five because I go through these gloves like I, I change them every two seconds. Um, I also have these masks, which you can find everywhere because hello, it's the coronavirus pandemic. So you can find these everywhere. You can um, use these or you can use um, the the N95, I think that's what it's called. It's a lot of different masks. You really should have the one that have those two pumps on the side because epoxy is very toxic when it's when it's when it's being mixed together so um you should have some type of face covering on i have been a bad girl many times by not wearing my mask and you can actually develop different lung disorders uh allergic reactions and different you know fatal things can happen to you from breathing in epoxy over long periods of time so i do kind of want to let you guys know about that because without telling you guys about safety am i really helping you guys you know so either put on one of these little simple masks or the big mask any type of mask you can to cover up your nose and your mouth while you're using epoxy is the best bet for you and also you need to be in a ventilated area no closed spaces no small rooms nothing like that you need to be in a big space or outside preferably outside if you can moving forward i have this one glove right here and this glove is what i use when i'm holding my tray um at the bottom so if i hold this tray at the bottom i won't end up with a lot of fingerprints and stuff because i do not paint the bottom of my trays and uh this keeps my hand from having fingerprints all over the bottom of the tray which is almost impossible to come off when you wipe it sometimes if i do get fingerprints on the bottom i'll use alcohol wipes and wipe off as much as possible but i do not paint the bottom of my trays i know a lot of people that do but i just feel like painting the bottom of the tray will eventually chip some people put epoxy on the bottom of the tray as well i just feel like there's a lot of work to do the top and the bottom of the tray when the bottom of the tray is not something that's going to be seen anyways it's supposed to be sitting like this so why paint and put epoxy on the bottom but hey, do what you do. If that's what you do, cool too. 
Um, so I have my X-Acto knife. I use my X-Acto knife when I'm scraping my tray. So after my tray is finished, I like to go around the edges and I scrape off any excess paint, glitter, glue, or epoxy that may be stuck over the side. Sometimes I get little drip marks and I use that to kind of uh, go off and pick them off the sides of my tray. And also if my image is too big, I'll use my X-Acto knife to uh, cut off the side as precise as possible to cut off the sides that's too big or too um, stretched out or whatever. I'll use that to cut it. And I also use it if I have bubbles. So like for a tray this big with an image this big, you nine times out of 10, you're gonna end up with a bubble or two. This one, luckily did not have any bubbles in it, but I have had trays that have bubbles on them. And I use my exact one to kind of like slit a little small hole, like a little slit in it and I use, and I rub it down to get the bubble out, but I do not do it big and sloppy and, and ugly because I don't want it to be shown under the epoxy. So that's what this is for. We have my popsicle sticks. I use my popsicle sticks to mix my epoxy and I use my paint brushes to obviously use to paint on my glue. Um, well, to, to, to put a thin layer of glue on my tray for my glitter trays, you won't need these, these um, paint brushes if you are not doing a glitter tray because you don't need the glue. <laughs> So anyways, these are my mixing cups. These are my small mixing cups. They actually have measurements on the sides. I'll try to link these below. I got them on Amazon. And pretty much everything on this table I got from Amazon. Um, but I'll try to link everything below for you. And these are my larger mixing cups. I get these from Dollar Tree. So for like, if I'm doing one tray, I use these, but usually I'm doing like 10 or 12 trays at a time. So I actually use the big cups from Dollar Tree. But if I'm just doing one tray, then I just take these two, two uh, measuring cups and fill both of them up to 15 milliliters. And then I pour them into one of these, in, into one of these cups and mix it together. And then I pour it onto the tray. And this baby right here, this is what I use to hold my trays while I'm working as well. This right here is a magnetic case. It has a clear top and it is like a silver aluminum and it has a magnet on the bottom. I get these from Dollar Tree. This is your best bet if you do not want to have to hold the sides of your tray or you know, have, you know, or holding the bottom kind of like a serving tray and you might slip and drop it or something. I use this magnetic case and I just hit it to the bottom. Look, this is the perfect size. It's the perfect weight. Actually, I put some little uh, alligator clips in here to make it a little heavier and then I take the side so the, so the top won't fall off and I just put it on the bottom. And it's not just like super hole where if you don't you bang it hard enough, it won't fall off. It can fall off. But if you place it in the center of the tray, in the very center of the tray, you can hold and maneuver your tray around while you're spray painting, while you're spreading your glue, while you're glittering it, while you're spreading your epoxy, all that good stuff. And then I release it by, when I get close to the table, I take this hand and I lift it and slide it down. And it's easy as that. Um, that's what I use this little magnetic case for. And this is from Dollar Tree if I didn't say it already. And then this is my my clear acrylic spray sealer. It is by Mod Podge. That is what I use to seal my images. I seal my images with the clear acrylic Mod Podge sealer spray. And I seal my image before I put it on a tray. I take, I, I print my image out and then I uh, take my acrylic spray. I spray the entire surface of the image one time, wait 30 seconds, I spray a second coat. Two times, I wait 30 seconds, I spray a third coat. Three times, and then I wait until that image is completely dry. If I touch the sides and it is a little sticky, then it's not ready to be placed on the tray. I seal all my images, and a lot of you guys that may have had problems with your image um, bleeding or getting these little drip spots and these wet spots and it starts to fade, it's because your image is not sealed. There are many different methods to sealing an image, but this is the easiest for me, is by spraying three coats of, of clear acrylic spray 
letting it uh, waiting 30 seconds in between each coat and then letting the image dry completely and it 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 it, it, uh, it works just fine see this is a completely finished tray so it works for me um so that's what i use this is my glitter. I, I love Recollections. I get my Recollections glue from Michaels. Um, majority of my glue comes from Michaels. I mean, of glitter comes from Michaels. This is the Recollections red. It's called Cherry. This is my favorite red that they have. It's not too bright. It's not too dark. It's just the perfect glitter red. I love it so much. And then I also use Rust-Oleum spray paint. I only use Rust-Oleum spray paint. That is the only spray paint that I use. I have, I have uh, experimented with different, different um, spray paints, and this is the only one that I have found that works well with sticking to the tray. It's not translucent. It's not watery. It doesn't give off this wonky look, and it just goes on really smooth. I, I only have to spray one coat. I literally spray one coat on my tray and it's easy peasy and it's done. This is one coat of Rust-Oleum and this is the color Sunrise Red. This is one coat and that's all I need. Some people use regular acrylic paint and a paintbrush and paint it. You do what's best for you. But because of the amount of orders I receive, I cannot sit and, and hand paint each and every tray. I'd rather, you know, spray spray paint. And I get all of my spray paints from uh, off Home Depot or Lowe's. I'm pretty sure there's some cheaper websites out there that sells worth Rust-Oleum, but until then, I get all of my spray paints from uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, and I only use the Rust-Oleum brand. Okay, and then my epoxy. I get my epoxy on Amazon and I put them in these little uh, condiment containers. I get these condiment containers from um, Dollar Tree and I just label it A and B for part A and part B to keep them from, you know, me from make, messing up or whatever. So I get the two gallon size, the really big gallons. I'm gonna pick it up in a couple seconds, but I get the real big two gallon size and it is by, um, what is the name of the place? Let me go get it so I won't mess up what the name of the place is. Okay, so it is by East Coast Resin. Every There are so many different brands of epoxy. You use what's best for you. You might have to explore and experiment with different kinds, but for me, this is the best kind for me to use. Um, I get the big two gallon size because I go through epoxy like water, and I just put them in these smaller containers if I don't want to, you know, drag those huge heavy gallons around the house i mean around when i'm working so that is the epoxy i use which is by east coast resin um it's a good brand to me it doesn't you know um dry funny it doesn't leave excessive bubbles and even if i do have bubbles i know how to get bubbles out so um i use my heat gun from i think it's from joanne fabrics but you can get a heat gun anywhere that sells um crafts so this is the brand of paper that i use this is by cricut you can see on the back it has a little logo cricut it is printable vinyl that is what i print all of my images on you can print your image on pretty much anything as long as you're able to seal the image but i choose this brand because it works well for me it's easy to peel off like sticker and it's just it's vibrant the colors are always super vibrant to me and then i use a canon printer so both of those together work really well um yep so this is the this is the cricut brand printable vinyl i get it on amazon or i get it out of michael's when i'm in store this is my favorite brand this is the brand that i only use for my images unless i'm doing water slide and um i rarely use water slide anymore because i really love this but if i'm doing like um, a tray that's maybe white or light pink or yellow, then I can use my water slide. Water slide is so limited uh, because of the fact that it's like transparent. They do have the white color, but I feel like it's no use of me using it when I can use this. So I use the clear water slide only when I'm using, when I'm making a white, yellow or pink or light purple tray or something like that. So let's go ahead and get started on the step-by-step -step of what I actually do to uh, achieve a really pretty perfect tray. Okay, so I have all of my trays in order from what I do, and this is what I do. First, I take my clear tray, which I get from Dollar Tree, um, and I spray paint it. I take my tray outside in open air, ventilation, 
and I spray paint my tray with this on the back. <laughs> with this on the back. Um, I just hold my tray pretty much out away from me and I take my Rust-Oleum spray paint and I spray like this. Nothing major, no extraness. And I do not spray super close to the tray because that will make drip marks. I spray a little bit away from the tray, kind of like letting the paint, the, the spray paint go on easily. And I barely spray, I do not hold it down to the very tip to make it super tight and spray, spray, spraying all the spray paint out. I literally, I, I brush the paint on easily so it can, you know, put as least amount as possible so I would not have drip marks because, you know, if you're gonna do a tray without glitter, then that's gonna show. So I just spray until the entire tray is finished. If you don't wanna get no spray paint on your arm, then it's probably best that you sit it down on a surface like that with that little magnetic thing on the back and you do it the same way. Spray away from the tray and spray the entire tray all the way around and make sure that everything is covered completely. Once your tray is sprayed, you can pick it up, take it inside so it can dry. Like I said, I just lift it up and lift it, lay it down and let it dry. I let my tray dry for at least 20 minutes. Some people go right in with the glitter, you can. Sometimes I do go right in with the glitter if I'm doing one tray. If I'm doing multiple trays at one time, then obviously I cannot do that each time because I'm not gonna sit and spray paint, go in the house and glitter, then go back outside and spray paint. I wanna spray paint all of my trays at one time and then I wanna glitter all of my trays at one time. I kinda like go in the method of doing everything at one time versus doing a hundred different things, running back and forth. It's just too much for me. So once my tray is sprayed and it is dry and I'm ready to go to the next step, I take my paintbrush and I get these little cheap sponge paint brushes from Michaels or uh, Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree sells these I, I think about five in a pack. I think I don't, it's been a long time since I bought them from Dollar Tree but I have bought these from Dollar Tree before. I bought this big huge box of these from Michaels. Um, I take my, my, my glue. You know what? I didn't even show y'all the glue that I use. Hold on. Okay, y'all, uh, I'm so sorry. I thought I had everything on the table that I used, but obviously I forgot. The most important thing for your glitter is your glue, yay! So I use my Podge glue. This is the glue that I use. I like it, it works well for me. I take my glue and I spread it across my tray and I try to put a very thin coat, just enough to get the tray sticky. I do not like big globs of, of paint and lines, extreme harsh lines. It needs to be as smooth as possible so when you put your glitter down, you won't see big lines on your tray because then you're gonna have to go in like two or three coats of, of glitter and the main goal is to use as least amount of glitter as possible because it's money you're trying to make money not spend money so not spend too much money so i put a thin layer of glitter of glue around my entire tray the rim everything the corners i try to make sure everything is covered then i take my glitter and i have a sheet of paper or a bag or something underneath to catch the glitter. I use these huge cardstock sheets from Michaels and I just sit it down and I sit the tray over it and I take my glitter and I glitter the entire tray. I do not, I repeat, I do not dump as I glitter. I mean, dump and glitter, dump, glitter, dump. I don't do that. I, I cover the entire tray with glitter. Literally cover the entire tray with glitter and then once the entire tray is covered in glitter, even if I dump this whole entire thing into this tray, I, I, I make sure the tray is covered, then I dump all the glitter. And since this will be on the bottom, I take it and I dump it. Tap it and I dump the glitter out. Once the glitter is on the tray, I take it off, I sit it down and I let it dry. If you put a very, very thick a uh, layer of glitter is gonna take longer to dry as well. So that's another reason why you don't wanna put too much glitter. I put I put the tray down with a thin layer of glitter, a thin layer of glue, and I let it dry for about 20 minutes. Once the 20 minutes is up, 
I check to see if it's dry. If it's still a little wet, then I'll wait a little bit longer. But if it's dry enough, then I will go in with my epoxy. Like I said earlier, I'll take two, two cups, fill both sides to 15 milliliters, and I'll take my larger cup and I'll pour both of these sides into the cup. I use my little popsicle stick and I scrape the sides, get as much as I can out, and I dump it into the cup, both sides. I dump as much of it and scrape the sides as much as possible. And y'all, don't forget to put on your, your mask and your gloves. So, like I said earlier, put on your mask and put on your gloves because epoxy is very sticky and oily and it's hard to get off your hands, off your clothes. It's not gonna come off your clothes. So just make sure that you are covered. You don't wear pretty clothes. You put on a, a, a apron or something. And then I just mix my epoxy. And you want to scrape the sides of the epox, of the, of the jar or cup or whatever you're using. Scrape the bottom and mix the epoxy as much as possible. You don't want to mix fast and wild and just doing all kind of crazy stuff because you're gonna end up with a lot of bubbles. You don't want your, your tray to have a whole bunch of bubbles because it makes it harder to get all the bubbles out you have to do a lot more work like heating using a heat gun or a blowtorch or something to get all of the bubbles out when if you just mix it carefully you won't have to worry about having so many bubbles and plus if you have too many bubbles you can't tell if it's fully mixed if you you want to look through the epoxy to make sure that it gets clear because it's going to get really cloudy when you put your epoxy mixtures together and even like the little straight lines and stuff, you want to make sure those are gone. So you wanna keep mixing and you wanna stay mixing in, in a consistent rate because epoxy does dry pretty quick. It does start to hard pretty quickly. So you wanna mix, 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 mix until it's done. You're gonna pour it onto your, your, your dry glitter tray. Once you get all the sides, scrape it out, get all your, your, your epoxy out, you're going to, again, Take your little magnetic container, put it on the bottom, and you're going to rub the epoxy in. That's another reason why I say you use your gloves. Some people use brushes, you use what you want. If you if you want to use brushes, that's fine. I feel like I can feel where the epoxy is missing with my hand versus using a um a brush because sometimes if you're not looking you'll think that you covered your entire tray with epoxy and then once it dries you'll see that you have a big old circle somewhere where epoxy didn't even touch it and it's because you didn't see it or you didn't feel it so that's why I use my two fingers with my gloves and I go around my tray I cover the entire bottom then I go around the rim of the tray and then I take some and I pull it up a little and I rub the sides all the way up around and rub the sides. I don't try to put a lot of epoxy on my fingers because it'll be a whole bunch of dripping. So I just take a little bit and I just kind of like rub it all the way around the tray to make sure the entire surface is covered with epoxy. And don't be, you know, afraid that, oh, it feels still rough because this is just the first layer of epoxy. You just want to make sure that you are sealing the glitter underneath the epoxy. And my, my camera cut off on me for whatever, I don't know. So if it's really cold outside, put your don't put your tray by the window because it's going to slow down the process of uh, drying the tray, curing the tray. Keep it somewhere where it's kind of warm or get a little small space heater so you can keep it, uh, keep it warm in that space. Okay, so once the tray is dry, you're going to take your image, you're going to print it, whether you have a Cricut machine or just some regular old scissors, you're going to print your image out and you're going to cut the image that you want to put on your tray. So once you cut your image, you're going to lay it down on a flat surface and you're going to take your handy dandy acrylic spray and you're going to spray the image. And remember, you're going to spray three coats and in between each coat, you're going to wait 30 seconds before you um, put it on the tray. After your third coat, coat of acrylic spray, you're gonna let the image dry completely. Like I said earlier, you can touch the corner. If it's a little sticky and it's not dry yet, don't put it on your tray. Wait until the image is completely dry, then you're going to place it on the tray. My method for putting a large image down on the tray is to peel half of the image and fold the back piece Lay the image down on the tray and use a scraper 
to scrape this side completely down to the tray. And then with that bottom flap, I start to peel. And as I peel, I scrape down. I scrape down till it's completely done. And then I just scrape the entire tray down to smooth it out. And if there's any bubbles, like I said, I take my X-Acto knife and I make a small slit. I rub it to, to flatten the bubble and then it is done. Once the image is on the tray, I go ahead and mix my next coat of epoxy. Like I said, 15 to 15 milliliters, mix it into the large cup. And then we're going to pour it onto the tray. Once it's on the tray, we're going to smooth it out. Once it is smoothed out completely around the edges, the corners, the entire image is covered with epoxy. We're going to wait another four to eight hours. And it is a lot of waiting in this process because it's just, it is what it is. This is that craft that requires time to create. So once the image is, the tray is completely dry, you will end up with this beautiful tray. This is how your tray will look. Once it is completely cured and ready, your customer will be so happy or you will be so happy with your beautiful tray. Isn't this nice? So yeah, guys, this is exactly how I make my rolling trays. If you have any tips or tricks, please make sure to leave it in the comments below. I'm always open to learning new ways and easier ways to make rolling trays. Let me know what you think and what you do. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll catch you guys in another one. Thank you. Bye.